Argentina has been commemorating the 36th anniversary of the Falklands War with renewed claims of sovereignty over the islands they call Las Malvinas. The war in which 900 Argentine and British troops died is widely seen as a mistake by the military dictatorship of the time, but most Argentinians believe the cause was just. We honour our soldiers' memory, said Defence Minister Oscar Agua. We also honour those who continue to fight so the Malvinas become Argentinas. But we Argentines should definitely understand that confrontation takes us nowhere. Britain refuses talks on sovereignty unless a majority of the 3,000 Falkland Islanders support the idea, and surveys show an overwhelming majority prefer to remain under British rule. Former Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva told a gathering of supporters on Tuesday that he wants his innocence returned. The frontrunner for October's election faces 12 years in prison on corruption and money laundering charges. The Supreme Court is due to decide on Wednesday if he'll go to jail or not. I don't want any personal benefit. I just want justice and that they say what's the crime I've committed. And if I committed a crime, you'll know to judge me better than them. Lula, as is commonly known, remains highly popular among Brazil's millions of working class people. Attending the rally were various personalities as well as representatives of left-wing parties. The event also featured a speech by the widow of Mariela Franco, the 38-year-old black countrywoman known for being born in a shanty town and defending the rights of the homosexual community. She was killed on March 14th. Nobel Peace Prize winner Malala Yousafzai left Pakistan for London after a four-day whirlwind visit back to her homeland. Her first since militants nearly killed her in 2012 over a blog advocating girls' education. Known by her first name, Malala visited her old home and school in the Swat Valley, a mountain region northwest of Islamabad which was under the control of the militants for about two years until the army launched an offensive to clear them out. Though she's known worldwide, Malala is a controversial figure at home. A group of private schools in Pakistan declared Friday to be I am not Malala Day for her alleged anti-Islam and anti-Pakistan ideology. In 2014, she became the youngest Nobel laureate, honoured for her work with the Malala Foundation, a charity she set up to support education advocacy groups with a focus on Pakistan, Nigeria, Jordan, Syria and Kenya. Russia's foreign minister says it's feasible Britain is responsible for poisoning former double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia in the UK. 29 nations have expelled Russian diplomats in reaction to the nerve agent attack in Salisbury last month, which Britain and her allies blame on Russia. Sergei Lavrov says the UK and United States are playing children's games. Many speak of the situation being worse than it was in the classic Cold War because there were some rules, some proprieties were observed. The Kremlin has denied any involvement. There are other explanations for the Skripal poisoning apart from the Kremlin order. The experts are speaking about them. They say it may well be beneficial for the British special services who are known for their ability to act with a license to kill. This may also be beneficial for the British government, which obviously found itself in an uneasy situation when they did not fulfill their promises to their electorate on the conditions of Brexit. The Kremlin has accused the UK of failing to provide any evidence implicating Russia. Sergei Skripal remains in a critical condition in hospital. His 33-year-old daughter is said to be conscious and talking. <laughs> Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman says Israelis are entitled to live peacefully on their own land. He made his comments in an interview with the US magazine The Atlantic. Previously, Saudi Arabia has refused to acknowledge any ancestral Jewish rights. He qualified his comments by stating that a peace agreement would have to be in place with Palestinians first. 
His views are being seen as another public sign of closer ties with Israel, but some also see it as a swipe at Iran, a country with which Saudi Arabia is in dispute on several fronts, including war-torn Yemen. Increased tension between Tehran and Riyadh has fueled speculation that shared interests may push Saudi Arabia and Israel to work together against what they see as a common Iranian threat. In the US, dramatic mobile phone footage shows the moment a train hits a truck that's stuck on a crossing. The driver can be seen getting down from the truck and running away to safety. Seconds later, the locomotive slams into the truck. The train driver was reported to be unhurt. The US government is set to relax targets to reduce car fuel emissions that were defined during the Obama presidency. Scott Pruitt, who was appointed by Donald Trump to head the country's Environmental Protection Agency, said the targets were politically motivated, raised the price of cars and didn't correspond with reality. Obama had imposed standards that would have doubled the fuel efficiency of American cars by 2022, with the goal of cutting oil consumption and reducing carbon dioxide pollution. By relaxing those standards, the federal government could now be on a collision course with states such as California, who wish to retain the right to impose stricter environmental measures. As mourners celebrated the life of anti-apartheid campaigner Winnie Madikizela Mandela outside her Soweto home, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa announced she would be honoured with an official memorial service and state funeral. And for security, Winnie Mandela had a great impact on the African continent. She is fondly remembered as a very gallant and brave person. Madikizela Mandela led the 27-year campaign to secure her then-husband, Nelson Mandela's release from jail. But allegations of extreme violence against those she suspected of being state informers tarnished her reputation. A developing respect. United States President Donald Trump has congratulated Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on his re-election. Voter turnout was down 6% on the 2014 election, but al-Sisi won 97% of the votes cast. The president's only opponent, Musa Mustafa Musa, secured less than 3%. President Sisi wanted uh, in this election reassert his legitimacy internally and externally. He also wanted to, that the international community keeps on supporting his regime. And I think also he wanted to show that the opposition, which is supported and financed by Qatar and uh, Turkey, are a failure and cannot deliver. As he begins his second term, al-Sisi is under pressure to improve economic conditions for the Egyptian people. I voted for President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi because he is better than the other candidate, in my opinion, but we hope that the country could do better. The people complain about the high prices of the food commodities, sugar, oil and so on, and I hope for better days and wish the president will do better. I didn't go to vote because I see this election is determined. He is a good president, but I feel no change happened. Voting in Egypt took place last week with both judges and official electoral staff supervising the process. One elephant has been killed and two others injured after the truck transporting them crashed on a motorway in southeastern Spain. The lorry, which was carrying five circus elephants, veered off the road and overturned. The driver was unharmed. The surviving animals escaped the wreckage, wandering onto the verge and nearby field. The motorway, which was busy with Easter holiday traffic, was closed as emergency services and animal experts dealt with the situation. The Injured elephants were eventually winched onto another truck and removed.